bigger things. Oh, fuck. That's what I've been doing wrong. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 42, and for this episode, I head to Las Vegas from Northern California after uh, visiting my family. But first, I stop by San Luis Obispo to visit a buddy, and then I play a session of 1-2 at a casino near Santa Barbara. So, hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get into it. Got the chew mash. It's a little bit before midnight. All they have is one two here, so that's what I'm gonna be playing. Once we get to chew mash, we sit down in the game and buy in for five stacks of extremely low society. There's a $100 max buy-in, so we've got 50 big blinds. The game I'm in gets short quickly. We're playing four-handed, and there's a splash pot. The casino adds $15 to the first pot of every hour. In this hand, we have King-10 suited on the button. The player under the gun limps in. We make it 13. The big blind calls. The limper also calls. We go three ways to the flop. It's jack, five, deuce, rainbow. We all check. The turn is the seven of spades. The players check. We decide to fire a bet at 25. That does the trick. Both players fold. We win it. Our table breaks, so I sit down at a new full table and get pocket kings in the big blind. Three players limp in. The cutoff raises to seven. It folds to me. I put in a three bet to 24. A lot of the players weren't folding very often to raises or three bets, but unfortunately, this time, they all let their hands go. It's okay though, we're off to a decent start. Now we have pocket tens on the button. It's a straddle pot. The under the gun player min raises to eight. I'm not sure if he realized there was a straddle or not. It folds to me. Calling is okay if we want to set mine. The players in the blinds probably will all call. We'll go five ways to the flop and not lose any more money if we don't hit a set. Pocket tens is the fifth best hand in poker though. It's strong enough to three bet a min raise. I make it 25. It folds back to the initial pre-flop raiser. He four bets to 65. Now I want to throw up a little bit. I think about letting it go, but it's only 40 more to call. I didn't drive all the way to Chew Mash Casino in the middle of the night to play a 1-2 game and fold. I go all in. It's a straddle pot, so it's only for around 30 big blinds effectively. The opponent calls. I'm hoping he has ace king or ace queen. He doesn't. He has pocket kings. I don't improve. His hand holds. And that's how you lose the maximum with pocket tens. We rebuy for another 100 and pick up 10 8 of diamonds under the gun plus one in a seven handed game and open to eight. When you're playing with 50 big blinds and you're in this position, you should probably just fold, but I'm stuck piles of cash, so I'm looking to get in the mix. The cutoff calls the eight, the big blind also calls, three of us see the flop and it comes out all deuces. The big blind checks, I have one of the worst hands I'll ever have and I have no showdown value. I stick to the story that I've got a strong hand and bet 14. If I get called, I'll double barrel, especially if a high card comes on the turn, since mainly low and medium pairs will be calling flop bets. No need to worry about that though, both players fold. Now we have ace-jack offsuit in the big blind, the player under the gun straddles, and it's a splash pot, so there's an extra 15 up for grabs in the middle. The first three players limp in, a short stack in the small blind raises to 12. There's 46 in the middle right now, I'm not interested in folding, I also don't want to call and have four players behind me call. My hand is pretty strong, and there's quite a bit of dead money in the middle. I also have blockers to other strong hands. I go all in, hoping it folds through, but if the short stack calls me, that's no big deal. It does end up folding to the small blind. He calls and has me crushed with ace-king suited. The flop is not good. He flops trip kings. We don't win this one. Time to add on some more chips. Then we get pocket eights, under the gun, plus one. The under the gun player straddles. I raise to 15. A player in middle position, three bets to 26. It folds back to us. We call. The flop is ace eight seven with two clubs. Boom. Smashed it. 
I check, the preflop three better throws 20 out there. I'm not really concerned about any of the possible draws when it's heads up in a three bet pot and we're short stacked. I just call the 20. The turn is the deuce of hearts, not a bad card. I check, the player goes all in. I call, he has ace queen offsuit and is drawing stone dead. The river is a nine. We're now rich, and by that I mean we're only stuck a little bit. The very last hand of the night, we get ace-king offsuit, under the gun, and open to nine. The player under the gun plus one calls, the cutoff calls, and the small blind calls. We go four ways to the flop, it comes nine, eight, deuce, rainbow. The small blind checks, we've got a hand with some value, and we're up against multiple opponents, so there's no reason to try and turn our hand into a bluff. I check. The player to my left also checks. Then the cutoff, snap bets 15. The small blind folds, it's on me. There's 53 in the pot, so I'm getting 3.5 to one on a call. Plus I've seen this guy take stabs at other pots with ace high bluffs earlier. I'd like to call here better if we were in position, but uh, we go ahead and throw in some chips. We call, the player on our left folds. Now we're heads up, the turn is the three of hearts. There are two hearts out there. I check, and the cutoff snap bets 40. I'm thinking he wouldn't value bet with one pair hands for fear that I might have check called flop with an over pair, so he's probably bluffing, perhaps with a draw. On the other hand, he could have two pair or possibly a set. I call again since I just don't believe him. The river is the old ace of diamonds. We've got top pair, top kicker, the backdoor flush draw misses, front door straight draws miss. I check to give my opponent an opportunity to bluff again if he did miss. He doesn't fail me, he bets 55, no big decision for me here. I call, he turns over ace nine offsuit for top two pair, so he put out a small bet on the flop, then really took me to value town on the turn with his pair of nines when I was drawing dead to a king. Then he hits his money card on the river. He's the same guy who beat me with the kings earlier versus my tens, so he got all of my money. At this point, he and a few others decide to rack up, so the game breaks and we book a loss. That's it for the session here at Chumash. I got smoked, lost $181. One guy owned my soul. Um, so, time to go to Vegas, I think. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a six hour drive, so gotta hit the road. That's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps a lot. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section and I'll definitely get back to you. Tomorrow, Andrew and I are headed out to Phoenix, Arizona. We're gonna be hosting either a 2 3 or 3 5 spread limit meetup game at Wild Horse Pass Casino. Um, it's gonna be Tuesday, November 7th at 7 p.m. If you're in the area, come hang out with us, have some drinks and play poker, it'll be a lot of fun. If you don't live um, in Vegas and you want Andrew and I to come to your hometown casino, then get in touch with your poker room manager, ask him if he'll allow us to film at the tables. If you will, then uh, send us over his contact info and um, maybe we can set something up to go to a casino near you. Hope you guys are all doing well. Good luck at the tables and I'll see you next time. Do I sound like Bane? Do I look like Bane? <laughs> <laughs> you do sound like Bane. <laughs>